morning. It's Friday the 11th of February. It's about 10 past six and I'm on my way down to find my truck and the paperwork that goes with it. That looks like 49. That's trailer 49. And I found the matching paperwork. So, let's see what's on the cards today. First one, Bristol. There she is. All cold and wet. Let's get it warmed up and do our walk around check. And all the rest of that jazz. And then I'm going to show you a new product that I'm going to be testing today. Whoa. Door's heavy this time on the morning. So yes, I have a new product that has been sent to me for free. Um, my end of the bargain is I get to keep the dash cam and provide an honest review for you guys about the camera and what's it like. So I'm just sorting out my manual entry here because I started work when I clocked in earlier on before I walked down the yard and I'm going to complete my walk around check and then we'll see what that camera is. What have we got then? You guessed it. Cardboard. <laughs> A lot of cardboard. Why are two roof supports here? Why are they there? One should be further down. Sort that out now. Move that roof support further down. And put these straps on properly. And then head off to the first delivery. I'm not saying that James, our shunter, doesn't know what he's doing. Even though the trailer's already coupled up to the truck on a morning, they always give it a check because as the driver, it's me who'll get done if I lose the trailer. <laughs> so just checking the legs are wound up, the airlines are connected, as well as the usual walk around check. Right then, checked everything outside. I wasn't so happy this morning when I saw it was raining. So I thought, ah, can I get my hair wet? It's gonna stick up everywhere. But luckily, uh, it's not raining now, so that's good. Now, let's talk about this dash cam because the footage, the footage in today's video is going to be from this dash cam. So let's have a look at it. Viofo or Viofo, however uh, the company pronounces it, have sent me this triple channel dash cam. So there's three cameras. There's a front facing camera for outside the window. There's an internal camera, which I thought was pretty unusual, that films inside the cab or car. And then a rear camera as well that films behind you. So I thought that was really interesting. And I wondered if it was possible to film today's whole video, all the driving footage, just using these three cameras because usually I have a separate dash camera. Then I have my GoPro camera facing me with my microphone attached to it uh, to make the sound better. And then I have like a side one that I clip on the window so you can see behind me. Well, today I'm gonna see about this one. So in the box, I've got my user manual. I've got read before installation that's talking to me uh, about some of the features. Then I have the camera itself. This red part will be the part that 
sticks on the screen. I've got my front camera there, which I can actually move up and down. That's pretty cool. And I've got my internal one that you can move to face the driver's side or the passenger side. And the whole unit itself, that front one, that front one there, you can move it all forwards or all back. So you can really get the angle that you want um, with this camera. So that's good for me. I've not used it at all yet. I have opened the box to see what was in there previously, but I haven't used it at all. So I have no idea how it works. We're just gonna roll with it today. There's my uh, 12 volt socket to plug it in. In the box as well, that's my lead to connect my rear camera. So it's quite a long lead there. So you don't have to worry in your car about making that fit. I've got one of those tools to fit the wire uh, behind those rubber things. Got a little USB here which I presume is what you put your memory card in for the computer to read. Got some replacement sticky pads there for the front camera and for the rear one. Another charging cable with a USB-C connection. So this camera uses USB-C. That's my rear facing camera. Again, stick it with that one and you can move the whole thing around to make it get the view that you want pretty cool what else have we got <clears throat> so the company Viofo or Viofo have also sent me some accessories for this camera which was very kind of them I've got a wireless Bluetooth remote control they also gave me a 64 gigabyte memory card but we're going on quite a trip today and with three different cameras all recording at the same time I've bought a bigger memory card because I'm not sure that 64 gigabyte will be enough for the journey I'm going to do today. I've also got this circular polarising lens filter that goes on the front of the camera that's supposed to help with the um, reflections from the glass and from the sun. So let's get that fitted on there straight away. Just push that lens on, that's all you have to do with that, just push it on. So if you're getting reflections from the windscreen, get yourself one of these. And they also sent me <coughs> the hardwire kit. So if I were to have the stash cam wired in uh, correctly, that's the kit I would need then for the camera to switch on and record automatically. So for my car, for example, I'm not sure how that would work in the truck, but there's really only one way to find out. So I might ask if that is possible somehow for that to happen. Again, quite a long camera cable here, so that's nice. If you're worried about the length of the cable, there's no need to be worried because there's plenty here. <laughs> so let's get this plugged in and fired up. There's no screen on this camera, so you will need to connect it to your smartphone to be able to set up your position and probably do the settings so i'm going to use my phone which is what you're recording on now to get this connected and set up properly and then we can get on with today's video okay so we're up and running with viofo's dash cam i set it up on my phone just so i could get an idea of the angle of the footage and everything and it's stuck on the window uh, it really is stuck as well. I can't get it back off. I did want to move it slightly, uh, but you can't. Anyway, it's all set up. And it's currently recording. 
So yeah, uh, let's rock and roll. When you have your um, buttons pressed, the camera speaks to you. So even if you don't connect it to your phone, you at least know what it's doing. It tells you if it's recording, it tells you if the memory card is formatted and so on. Now the internal camera is apparently night vision. So let's turn off the light. You can see on my phone, it's not very good. Can you see me on that one? Who knows, we'll only find out later. Uh, not sure what the microphone is like either. So bear with me, we're gonna test it today. So first up today is Bristol. I'm delivering a full load there to Bristol uh, in Brislington, if that means anything to you Bristol people out there. And then from Bristol, we're going to Pontypool. So a nice day out today. I'm going to set up my GPS because I've not been to that particular delivery in Bristol before. And then I'm going to get moving. Come on, because time's ticking. <laughs> See you in a bit. I mean, if the microphone and internal camera on this dash cam are good, that means I can just talk to you any time during the day when we catch something interesting and I don't have to remember to have told my camera to start recording. But we'll see. Take off that protective film. It's pretty cool so far, that camera. Uh, it definitely feels like a quality product. It's got a bit of weight to it. It feels like high quality materials and nice presentation in the box and everything. But we'll see. I've had a lot of trouble with my previous dash cam uh, because it just seems to stop recording halfway through. So with this one, I'm hoping I'm not going to have that problem. I had actually filmed a video last week um, and the problem I had is the dash cam stopped recording halfway through the video and it was a tutorial video so I needed that footage and yeah the video was no good because the parts that I wanted it to capture it didn't capture so I just thought I'm not going to put half a video out so I left it. That's why I've been a bit quiet, really. I've had a few comments saying, Hayley, where are you? I'm here, you know. Um, After 800 yards, turn Just left, getting on with it. Just getting on with it, really. Doing my job and going home, yeah. I have nothing to complain about. About this company on board, other than the fact and this is a really big complaint actually so maybe I do have something to complain about I know people at the company watch my videos so I'm going to make a massive complaint here so everyone can see turn left the hot chocolate machine by the clocking in thingy bob is just giving me hot water all week it's been giving me hot water no chocolate in it and I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. There's nothing to complain about with this company. I love it here. I feel at home, if that makes sense. It's such a strange thing to say. And I know that people watch these videos from the company. And I hope it doesn't feel awkward saying that. But it kind of feels like home. It feels like I've found my place now, if that makes sense. I am the same level of happy, if not more happy, than I was in my class 2 job. So that's really good because I'm feeling as happy as I was then and I loved my job then. Uh, it was a tough ride moving on to the Arctic. It's so hard to get used to everything. I mean, when you're a new driver it's hard to reverse. 
everything's just difficult. You come into problems that you've never come across before, like those slider flex trailers were completely new. Um, the kind of work was completely new, the load was new, the steel coils and sheets and things. It was all one big roller coaster, up and downs definitely, but an experience that I treasure because reversing into some of those doors was so difficult. But that's made me a better driver Cost today. About and so it was definitely a roller coaster, and I didn't enjoy it as much on the steel coils as I did on the stillages or bins of nuts and bolts that I did on class two. But now we know that construction definitely wasn't for me. Uh, I didn't like all the mud and. The I suppose in the winter it didn't help either because that's when the weather was the worst. The rain almost every day and the building sites really were worse than usual I suppose but it definitely wasn't for me anyway. I like this cardboard business and one thing that really helps here as a new driver is all of the trailers are the same length. So it doesn't matter which trailer you pick up, whether it's an older one or a newer one, they're all the same length and that helps a lot when you're learning because they all reverse the same way. When I was at K Transport, the different trailers were different lengths, some were longer, some were shorter, so it was much harder to get your head around it to start with because that amount of steering would work for one trailer but if you had a longer one or a shorter one a different one the same amount of steering doesn't work After so yards, you really have to about. you really have to get used to that but again such a valuable experience it wasn't i wasn't feeling like it was a valuable Cost experience at the time and take the second exit but it definitely was right. and i'm so glad i persisted with the arctic because now I probably never go back to the class two. Just because I like this kind of work. I like the that you have your tractor unit, the same one all the time. Look at this company. And you just pick up different trailers. And the unit itself is much bigger. There's more space in here. So if you're waiting, you can stand up in your cab and everything. So yeah. I'm obviously feeling chatty this morning, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think I'd only ever go back on class two After yards, or seven and a half ton or something if I couldn't find a suitable job. If for some reason maybe I went off to have a family or something and this job wasn't available, then maybe I'd switch then, but that would just be a change of circumstances. Out of the two, I definitely prefer the class one. Now I've found a job I like and I think that's the key. There's lots of different jobs but you need to find the one that makes you feel like your home, makes you feel like you've found your place. So if you're out there and you've switched to class one or you, you've started driving and you're not feeling a hundred percent, don't be scared if you are able to, to move company because different companies, different types of load, it makes a bigger difference than what you think. It really does. Anyway, let's get to Bristol.
about four miles away now from the destination and I've had comments just thinking here going along in Bristol uh, I've never been to this delivery before and I get the same question a lot how do you plan your run or your route well I look at the destination on Google Maps and try to think about after 300 how yards, I might get in the place and if and I can turn the around and exit, exit. then I look at the wider roads road. to try and find something a bit more suitable and then I just use my GPS but I make sure that I match up my GPS with the location on Google Maps and just general driving around I have no idea which lane to be in and so on until I actually get there the so I know I'm going straight second exit. at this roundabout because my GPS is telling me to and you can see on this roundabout here it's a bit of a guess really I saw the forward arrows then I saw my lane go to this one to go Take straight exit, A43, I think 20, it's something that a lot of new drivers are just worrying about but you'd be surprised everywhere in the UK the roads they work the same kind of way they work the same way and it's the same road signs everywhere you go that I've been so far anyway so there's nothing to worry about if you're not sure you just take your time don't you that's all I think a lot of places you can end up in the wrong plane quite easily particularly those tricky ones that just require local knowledge but that will be the same everywhere and I'm sure the local people will know that you're likely to make that mistake I wonder if you can see that hot air balloon there on the dash cam to the right behind these traffic lights always remember coming this way on holiday as a kid my mum used to like to go for holidays in Devon I never went on that many as a kid really because uh, my mum wasn't the most confident driver but I remember whenever we used to come this way towards Devon like through Bristol you'd always see hot air balloons around this area I don't know why I don't know if they have something here just reminds me when I was a kid wondering how on earth they float <laughs> and how they don't just fall but of course scientific background knows I know how it works now but I think it's always good on cartoons when they demonstrate it with uh, a gas cooker and the cartoons where they make a parachute and put a gas cooker on it and then make it float I've had a look on the map and it looks to be a small industrial estate I'm not sure what the way in is or where exactly my destination is so I'm hoping that when I get nearby there'll be some kind of sign somewhere that says to go that way of course if you're not sure don't turn anywhere where you're not sure with an arctic because you can't turn around so easily why was that man staring at me turn left that looks a bit tight doesn't it fiberglass supplies uh, don't see anyone that is the name of my customer but we'll roll with it anyway it says on the address off A4 and that's the entrance I've come in on so hopefully we'll find it here somewhere
turn left. Oh, okay, that's a bit tight. <laughs> oh, that would be all right with the rigid. Let's see. clues to help us, I wonder. Turn right, then you have reached your destination. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. Have reached your destination. I am old lane. And that is enough space to spin this truck around, I would imagine. Or is it? I'm not so sure. I could back it around there. I don't know. Let's let's find out what's going on first. to the wall that side. Woo. Woo. Okay, well I'm going to get this unloaded and catch up with you in a second. How cool is that? Don't get them in Wolverhampton. <laughs> well, how about that? The hot air balloon that I was watching all the way on my way to Bristol has landed in a field right next to where I'm delivering. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Anyway, while I've been sitting here while the man has been unloading me, I've been having a mess around with this dash cam and I've discovered that the front camera facing me in the cockpit as we'll call it seems to be only black and white for some reason so i'm going to set up my other camera or maybe i'm going to leave it i don't know i think do you know what i'm just going to leave it we're going to do all of the footage today just with that dash cam so let's hope it turns out good i've actually wired up the rear camera now so we have the rear camera plugged in here and I've trailed a camera cable across there. I'll neaten that up a bit later. And I've got a camera there pointing in my mirror. So that is the rear facing camera that's supposed to point out your back window. But I've put it there with a the hope that it will be something different. Oh, look, look, look. That thing's the balloon. Quick, look. It's taking off again. Where is he? I don't know, he's somewhere behind me. Quick, let's see if we can see him in the other mirror. I can, look. He's taking off again, where's he going? Can't see him behind me, he's just in my mirror. Oh well, uh, I've put that rear facing dash cam that's supposed to point out the window behind you in your car. I've put it there with a hope for something interesting. So we'll see. I've got my camera that I clip on this side. I did originally put that one this side, but then I realised I can't wind my window down with that stuck on the window. So I've put it that side. Anyway, let's get over to Pontypool and pick up some pallets.
are then just one mile away from Pontypool. I was actually down here earlier on this week. I think it was earlier this week anyway. Um, and I delivered to the yard next door to where we collect these pallets from. Um, I don't have any paperwork or anything for this pallet collection, so I'm hoping that they're going to know what the deal is. I presume so. So I'm just going to turn up there and see what happens, basically. Squeaky break from this truck today. This trailer, I should say. You have reached your destination. It is on your left. I don't remember there being a digger there last time. here the other day was parked just there in front. I guess I do the same then. do actually is put it on brake and have a walk across the road there to those services because I need a wee story of my life so yeah I think I'll get everything opened up and then have a walk over there to the toilet okay well it's not here where I need to be apparently, even though I saw another driver here. Apparently they just use this land sometimes, I don't know. So it's all part of the same company apparently. So I'm actually gonna be going over there to the place I delivered the other day and I have to reverse into their yard. When I came here the other day, I drove in and blindsided a little bit to their shutter don't like reversing on the blind side makes me nervous because it just becomes a guessing game and don't like guessing so I think this time I'll drive up there first and then reverse around that way into their yard over there and then you have to go down to the door which you can just see the top of there hopefully where the little white sign is and they load and unload you there but there is a truck already there so I have to wait for that one to come out first so we're just gonna sit tight here and wait okay now I found where I need to be now turns out it wasn't to do with these guys uh, the original forklift driver I spoke to works for a different company over the road so yeah it's like I'm confused we didn't need to go there anyway so I'm just walking now because I need a wee and there's no toilet there so the, the man said to me go in the woods I said oh no I'm not going in the woods so I'm having a walk across the road to those services because they told me I need to wait about 15 minutes anyway for them to get back to me uh, on whether there's anything to collect or not. I've already opened the curtain clips, but yeah, I just have to wait. Apparently, on board were told there were no pallets to collect until next week. So 
maybe there's not anything but who knows just going for a little walk cross over this main road somehow and go from there We did say they have a unit over here, but I have no idea which one it is. Everything all has different names on it. Like, I'm a bit confused. So I'll just walk over there to the services. I see there's a KFC there and a petrol station. We'll go from there. Some going trying to cross over that road. Woo! No crossings or anything. I did try one of the buildings over there that said reception and there was no one in there so I just walked across there anyway probably won't do that again go find these guys now where the pallets are to find out if there's anything actually to collect and if there is to get it loaded <laughs> Oh, right, well, it turns out there's three quarters of a load ready, but there's something about an hour and a half wait. So I phoned the office to say, do you want me to wait? And they said, yes, so we're going to sit here and chill while they get me loaded up. The time is 12.14. No big problem for me. The fridge in this MAN truck actually makes a really good footrest. So if you pull the fridge out, you can actually put your feet on it and you can chill. So, I guess I can get my uh, iPad and just, and just chill. I was just talking to the guy over there and he asked me what am I doing in this profession <clears throat> and he says because you know only a small percentage of drivers are women and I said well funny enough I used to be a school teacher and he said jokingly oh that's enough to make anyone drive a lorry then so we were talking about it and I was telling him why I left and and then it got me thinking, I get the question a lot, would I ever go back to teaching? Of course I get the trolls on YouTube say, you should go back to teaching, uh, and all that business. But seriously, I wouldn't go back because I'm earning more money now for sitting here for an hour and a half with my feet up on my fridge. I've had a nice day today. I've had a nice trip to Bristol singing to my music on the way. I've seen a hot air balloon up close, landing a field next to me. I've had a run over the Prince of Wales Bridge, over the water. And now I'm sitting here with my feet up on my fridge, chilling. Like, why the hell would I ever go back to teaching, really? I wouldn't. So there's your answer. I earn more money now for sitting on my bum than I did then. Everyone says, ah, oh, teaching, it's not stressful. You're off for 13 weeks a year. I don't miss the school holidays, to be honest, because I have a job I enjoy now. So why would I, why would I want to go back to being stressed all day? Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed being a teacher. But I'm definitely not going back to it. No way. Just sitting here now reading about the dash cam. And the instruction manual is really, really clear. I know sometimes when you buy um, dash cams from China for example the instruction manual can be uh, not the best English and it can be quite difficult to understand this one is actually really good it's really clear and they have a category for everything so yeah that is so good here 
tells you how to connect the camera, tells you everything that's included uh, and troubleshooting as well if you ever have problems. They give you the customer service phone number, uh, email address and they have a Facebook page as well. You get a 12 month limited warranty with this dash cam and you get lifetime technical support. So that's pretty cool. The remote works perfectly as well, I have it here. Nice and small. It has a sticky on it, on the back that you can stick on your dashboard or wherever you want to put it. I haven't done that yet. Um, I've just been trying it out. It even comes with its own instruction manual just for the remote itself. And they give you a battery with it as well. And it tells you in the book how to connect the remote to the camera. And again, it's very detailed. There's a GPS module on this camera as well. So it can track your speed. <clears throat> so at standard, you get your type C charging cable, your card reader adapter, your trim removal tool, your mount that goes on the window. You can remove the camera from the mount that sticks on the window and it tells you how to do that in the book. Uh, you get a warranty card, your car charging adapter, and of course the camera itself. Your optional extras are your rear camera your rear camera cable that I've got connecting to mine over there, that long one, your circular polarizing lens filter, your Bluetooth remote is an optional extra, and the hardware kit is an optional extra. So bear that in mind if you're checking out this camera. I have to wait for the air to build up. And if you put a bit of revs on, it goes faster. As you can see, my chair rises. Okie dokie, let's go, we're estimated to arrive. You will arrive at your destination at 4.17pm. At 4.17. So let's go. Nearly there then. Hopefully all the footage has turned out great today. But I'll only find out when I connect it to the computer and edit. I hope that the sound is good too. I mean, from an insurance perspective, this is a brilliant dash cam because with the camera facing the driver, you can prove that you weren't using your phone or messing with anything uh, should you have an accident. So it's brilliant in that sense. And it might even make a brilliant vlogging camera because I have one pointing behind me, one in front of me and one on me. So it, it might be a good beginner vlogging camera, really. The worst part about editing the videos is trying to synchronise all the different cameras together. So when you steer the front camera when that one turns the side ones turn as well and that your voice matches up with everything so by having the same camera recording at the same time three different angles technically they should all be in sync so that should make the editing process a lot easier but we'll find that out as I say when I connect to a computer Now before I forget, there is a gentleman that makes a video of all about this dash camera and he shows the features in a bit more detail than I've done today. So I'm going to post a link to his video in the description. So if you are interested in this ca dash camera from Viofo or Viofo, then you can check that link out and you'll see in a bit more detail what all of these extra pieces do and how the camera works itself lady driver there from uh, steel company I used to see her all the time when I was working for Case I think I only ever spoke to her once, something like that, and that was when I very first passed as well. Uh, 
I thought, yeah, she's still wives to me. <laughs> Women drivers. Gotta look after each other. Shout out to you if you're watching. I don't know if she knows I make these videos. I have no idea. Cliff driver acknowledges my driving. Ugh, there's a hole in my t-shirt. This is an old one anyway. I can know where my new ones to work. Right, let's get the curtain open and disconnect and park the unit. And then see what's for tomorrow because I'm working tomorrow, Saturday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Do you want me to open the curtain? Yes, please. Well, there you have it. Another day in the life of Hayley. Anyway, if you like this video, then you can give me a thumbs up. Ooh. And of course, if you want to stay tuned with me, then you can subscribe otherwise thank you to Viofo for sending me that dash cam to try I'm sure everything's turned out perfect uh, check out the link in the description if you're interested in that dash cam and the other video that I mentioned that explains it in more detail otherwise I'm gonna see you guys in the next video